and this is going to be a series of videos uh, kind of like a mini e-course that I'm going to put up on the blog on Color 101 and the reason I decided to do this is because I have lots of people who either in my art classes that I teach here in Colorado Springs or just online ask me how I layer color in my altered books because basically if you it's really easy to make a big brown mess on your pages and and I see a lot of students getting stuck in my art journaling classes where they'll just paint like the whole page blue and there won't be anything and then they 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 feel stuck because they want to add yellow to it or something like that and it's kind of too late after you put blue all over your page you know to add yellow in because it would just kind of make a mess so this is kind of a just a, a video on some things that with color that is just intuitive to me so I'm gonna try to do my best to explain it and how I work so one of the first rules about layering color and one of the first things you need to understand excuse me is you need to look at what kind of medium you're using so if you're using a water you're either using a water-based product or you're not using a water-based product and it's a more permanent uh, a permanent product such as acrylic paint and it's it basically just if you're using a water-based product all it means is that when you go to add something on top of the water-based product it's going to be reactivated and it could blend with what other what uh, whatever color you're adding to your pages so it gets kind of tricky if you're wanting to use water-based products and I actually use a lot of water-based products in my art journals but I figured out the way to layer it with other products so that it doesn't make a mess and it becomes something beautiful so let's start with some watercolors and I just have cheap ones I don't know, I paid like two bucks for this at, at the store. They're not the best watercolors, but that's okay. So my first rule is if you're going to be using a water-based product, you want to choose like two or three colors. And you don't want to just, of course, you just don't want to have like one color all over the page. You kind of want to plan it out. Um, and you always want to start with colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. You wouldn't want to start with maybe like the orange orange and blue because they're opposite each other on the color wheel and if they blend they're going to make a huge big mess. So I'm going to choose the orange, the red, and the pink here and I might add in some yellow if I feel like it. But I'm going to just start painting on my altered book here and I'm going to alternate between colors and I'm going to kind of blend them together. And this is just going to give your page a lot more interest because it's just more interesting for your eye to see lots of different colors or several different shades of the same color blended together. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to kind of just keep blending my colors here. Now you can leave some white in spots if you if you feel the need to do that. And I just I always like using pink and orange together because I think those colors, like the orange is so overpowering that the pink kind of tones it down a little bit and makes it prettier. And they and they blend really nicely together. So if I'm using watercolors then I kind of get like this orangish pink color. And I just like that. I like the way it looks. 
So let's see if I want to keep going over here on this side. I'm just going to keep kind of painting over here. The key to this is kind of you have to plan it out in your head before you start. You kind of have to have an idea of what colors you want on your pages. So let's say that I get this far and I know that I want to start adding some blue in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is clean up my brush. And then I'm going to let's say I want this color blue in here. Remember, these are water based, so if I get them next to each other, they're going to blend. Now, I don't think there would be a big deal with the pink, the blue, and the and the red because it's going to, if it blends together, it's going to make like a purple. But if I want true blue, which this blue is not really what I want it to be, let's see, I'm going to use a different one. Now, so if I want to use blue on this side, what I'm going to do is just leave some space in between my colors so that they're not really touching, so that they're not blending. You kind of have to have just a basic understanding of the color wheel and how, basically how the products are going to react to each other. So if I wanted a more like a, 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 a turquoise color, I could get some yellow on my brush. Of course that's not going to work. I don't know why this blue is not, it's almost like muddy. There we go. Just have to choose the right Colors, I guess. There, I have kind of a deeper turquoise. It's almost more like a green. So there, I have done two, two different kind of color, two different kinds of colors on the same page, but I've just kind of kept them away from each other just so that they're not blending together. So that's kind of what I do if I want to use colors that are like not necessarily right next to each other on the color wheel. So. A lot of times when I'm thinking about my pages, I will start with just warm colors on one side or warm colors all across the board. So a lot of times if I'm if I'm doing a spread, I will either choose a warm color palette, which is reds, oranges, yellows, or I will go with a cool color palette, which are blues, uh, blues, yellows, and greens. And I just find that that is a good place to start. Not to say that the warm, warm colors that I can't come back in later and add some cool colors on top. You just have to be very careful about what, what products you're going to use. So when I'm doing my pages, a lot of times I like to start with watercolor because it is so light and it's kind of a good place, a good base to start with because it's just, I, I like to start lighter and then add darker colors after. If you add dark first, then it's really hard to go back to light. And I think that's why I choose not to use a lot of purples in my art journaling because a purple is so intense that it's so hard to come back from purple. It's so hard to tone it down. 
unless you're just doing a really soft wash with it. So if I wanted to add more intensified color on top of this side, I might go ahead and take some terracotta of the color wash and I'm just going to spray with this French vanilla and see how lovely that looks right over the pink. It, it's just, it complements each other well and I like being able to see the pink underneath. And so, just so you know, I, I would never take the orange and spray it over here on this, on these colors because that would just be like kind of, it would make a huge mess. It would pretty much turn to a brownish color. So again, these are water-based, so they're going to react with whatever is over here and not make, make it, it's just not going to be very pretty. So as I'm building my backgrounds, okay, so let's say I want to add some more layers on this. This is obviously the beginning of a background. So I want to add some yellow. Now yellow is perfect at this point in time because yellow works with, will blend well with this and would blend well with this. But the thing that I'm going to start doing now is using more permanent products. So I'm going to start with an acrylic paint and that way I'm, I have a better chance of it not, it's, it's, it's pretty much because it's a permanent thing, because it's acrylic paint, it's not going to blend with the watercolor and make a huge mess. Now if I, if I did it over a really dark, saturated spray, like if I tried to paint the yellow over a really dark um, spray, it's going to definitely pick up the blue in the spray. So I'm going to just add some yellow, and this is where it kind of And this is where it kind of is beneficial that I am, that I left that white there because it is going to allow my yellow to work still. But again, I'm putting the yellow over this pinkish orange color and it's, it's, it is kind of showing through because the yellow is so such a light color. It is kind of showing through, but it's it's it works together. So let's see what happens when we put the yellow over on this green. My greenish blue here. definitely a different color than right here where it has the pink underneath, but it works because the yellow and the yellows, blues, and greens blend really well together. I'm just take my clippy off here. I kind of love yellow stripes. I don't know why I am into yellow stripes right now, but I am. 